state of the leaders to my country in Barbados. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here to All Saints Notting Hill for today's Barbados National Heroes Service. We're very grateful to the Barbados High Commission for choosing All Saints to be the place where you come to celebrate and remember and cherish the National Heroes of Barbados, standing with courage. You are all most welcome. As we proceed through the service, I'd invite those of you who are to come forward to speak simply to come forward without being asked to come. You'll know when you're speaking and see it in the order of service. So do come forward here to make your presentations and prayers and readings. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications and thanksgivings unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we sing together our opening hymn, Count Your Blessings.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the program. If I could just ask you to stand with us and receive the blessings, which is a song that we're going to sing for you this afternoon. Receive the blessings of the Lord. Thank you.
afternoon church. It's a little chilly in here, but I can't hear Let, Let's warm it up. Good afternoon church. Barbadian style now. Good afternoon church. No, we are Barbadians in here. Let me apologize for the absence of the high commissioner who is doing some other government business today. It is an honor to be here at All Saints Notting Hill. And I wish to thank Father Corbett and the congregation for readily agreeing to host us for this first service paying tribute to our national heroes. I also acknowledge our visiting priest, Reverend David Hoy, and organist, Mr. Tate. Of course, it's a pleasure to see everyone. And I also want to acknowledge the staff of the Barbados High Commission and Barbados Tourism Marketing, Inc. It is a particular blessing to have younger Barbadians here. Some studying and working here, others born here, attending and participating today. The presence of everyone here is indicative of your interest in all things Barbados. It also suggests an understanding that we must celebrate our history and those who made a decisive difference if we are to maintain our culture and, importantly, interest younger generations in our legacy. There's no denying it. Barbados would not be the same without the 11 national heroes, nine men and two women we remember and celebrate today. In defining the character of our heroes when they were first introduced in 1998, the late great Prime Minister of Barbados, Professor the Right Honorable Oinatha noted, our national accomplishments were not conferred on us by acts of nature. These have been achieved only by the most heroic struggle of a generation upon generation of Barbadian patriots, determined to create a just and good society in this land. He went on to say, in some cases, they have set examples by which not only Barbados, but indeed the world, might live, and they bore the highest honors with the utmost humility. Prime Minister Arthur detailed the qualities possessed by our heroes. Sacrifice, dedication, selfless service, visionary leadership, determination, and excellence. And there's one more, undaunted courage. Regardless of different backgrounds, spanning slavery to the privilege, and different times, our heroes, above all, distinguish themselves by standing with courage. Which brings me to the essential point I wish to make today. The times, in Barbados at least, have changed since the time of Bassa who died in war. But there are still many wars to be fought. And it is our turn to stand with courage against the myriad forms of tyranny and injustice seemingly endemic in our world, many of which negatively impact our country. Our fight today may be against the purveys of climate change that is wreaking havoc on all countries, but particularly small countries like Barbados. For Barbados, climate change is literally a matter of life and death. 
our current Prime Minister has stood with courage on this matter. Our fight today may be against the incredible gap in wealth distribution, which is only making the poor poorer. Inequities in income and spurious efforts by developed countries to stifle the development of small countries are now two of the world's great abominations. The Bridgestone Accord is an audacious proposal to the world to reset funding to free small countries like Barbados from the albatross, the slavery of perpetual debts and a lack of funding for critical areas. Our fight today may be against wars. God knows there are still too many of them. While attention has been concentrated on the relatively recent wars in Ukraine and the Israel-Palestinian war, wars have been raging for decades in places like Yemen and Burkina Faso. Is there no one with courage willing to stand up for Haiti? Our fight today may be against cybercrime and the cowardly attacks on social media, which are destroying lives and causing deaths. Amidst this onslaught, where lies are obliterating truth, someone has to stand with courage and prevent the destruction of lies under the guise of free speech. The violent abuse of social media, if allowed to continue, will, all, will only poison the good of social media. Young people, step up. Do not wait until you become a victim. From just these few examples, you should have inferred that change for the better will increasingly be fought in the global space. Thankfully, as a result of the superlative efforts of our heroes at critical times, Barbados has settled and avoided many of the crises still plaguing nations. It is not by accident that four of our heroes emanated from the cauldron of the 1930s. Standing with courage, there were wonders in the decade of the 40s, especially, and onwards, to eradicate social ills and foster a stable, productive, and prosperous society. Another hero, Gary Sobers, was born during that decade in 1936. It is due to our heroes that Barbados has evolved an enviable society in which such matters as injustice, democracy, such matters as justice, democracy, poverty, sectarian and, sexually, and sexual violence, women's rights and such have long been settled. And that we have institutions that actually work. Out of this, we have events of people who are universally praised for our excellence in every regard. Two of our heroes, the great Sir Garth and Rihanna, epitomize this. But it is in this area of excellence that all Barbadians have made a mark. It is due to the everyday conduct of Barbadians that we enjoy the lofty worldwide reputation as dedicated achievers and decent people. We now occupy a very much changed society from the times up to the 1930s, thanks to our heroes. Different times will reveal new heroes. But today we can ponder that maybe what is required is standing with courage every day to protect the considerable achievements and ideals of Barbados. That we stand with courage on everyday matters. It may be as simple as standing with courage against workplace bullying or office wastage or the degradation of green spaces. An evolving Barbados and world may bring one or two new heroes. Maybe there's a Barbadian child obsessed with gaming who will envision it as a teaching tool to transform education. Maybe we will produce someone who will find a unique way through the NCD conundrum we face. Maybe someone will apply AI in a defining way be the impetus that actually curbs the excesses of big countries on one global issue at least, and maybe, as is likely, with different and increased opportunities, 
another Barbadian watching Rihanna will become dominant in a different way in an existing field. What is clear is that we would not be here without our national heroes. Without our heroes standing with courage, whether Bassett against slavery, Sarah Ann against religious oppression, Samuel Prescott against classism and oppression, Duncan O'Neill against poverty, Sir Grant Lee and Sir Hugh against political separation and social exclusion, Barrow against imperialism and for higher education, Gary against racism and race-inspired notions of black achievement by his sheer brilliance. And Rihanna, Rihanna, racism again, this one never ends, against the modeling world and the beauty industry complex, and, atten and attempts by some to whitewash her. Yes, Barbados and the world would not be what we are without these 11 extraordinary patriots. It is therefore fitting that we acknowledge and celebrate our national heroes as we do today. It is equally fitting, it is requisite, that we be inspired to follow their examples. Let us all then be so inspired and have the courage to stand in the breach for a better Barbados and better world for coming generations. Happy Heroes Day. I thank you. Good afternoon. It is my absolute pleasure this afternoon to bring to you the first presentation of our national heroes featuring Bussa, the freedom fighter. Having known freedom, Bussa could not be contained. He chose death over bondage. Believed to be born a free man in Africa in the 18th century, he was captured and brought to Barbados as a slave. By 1800, he was one of the slave labor elite that was literate and informed about local and international events relating to the anti-slavery movement. Bassa was a head driver at Bailey's Plantation when, on Saturday, 14th of May, 1816, he led the biggest slave uprising in Barbados' history. The well-planned and executed mission mobilized some 400 slaves at plantations all across Barbados who did battle with the planters and the 1st West India Regiment. Bassa was sadly killed in battle. But what was named the Bassa Rebellion changed the politics of Barbados. In 1985, 169 years after the revolt, a statue, the first to be erected in tribute to our heroes, was unveiled at what is referred to as the Bassa Roundabout in Barbados. Barbados's first freedom fighter, Bassa, is our only hero who died in battle for our country. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Right. I'm here to speak of Sarah Ann Gill, someone that fought against religious oppression in the, 19, in the 1820s. At age 28, she was a free colored woman who chose to be a Methodist, a religion outlawed at the time, and by 1820, she was a full member of the church. Methodism was introduced to Barbados by Dr. Thomas Koch, in 1788. By 1793, the Methodist ministries were viewed as anti-slavery antagonists and agents of the English-based anti-slavery society. As its popularity grew, especially among blacks and colored, so did the hostility towards Methodism. In October 1823, a white mob destroyed the chapel and the Methodist ministry in Bridgetown. Head of the church, Reverend William Shrewsbury and his wife 
were forced to flee for their lives to St. Vincent. Sarah Ann and her sister-in-law, Miss Christina Gill, who were leaders of the church, opened their homes so members, of the ch so members could continue to meet and hold service. The Act of 1964, which stated that no more than five persons could gather for worship at any time unless in a licensed meeting place and led, to a and led by a licensed preacher who was considered broken and Sarah Ann was persecuted by society and the legal authorities. Every day and night for a year, Sarah Ann's life was threatened and she was warned that her home would be burnt, burnt down. She received two prosecutions for holding illegal meetings. Magistrates alleged she was harboring guns and ammunition in her home and she was eventually prosecuted by the House of Assembly. This persecution only steals Sarah's resolve. She, de she defended herself against authorities with her own money and worship services continued regardless of the risk, constant threats or personal endangerment. On October the 9th, on October the 19th, 1824, after the persecution ringleaders, the Secret Committee of Public Safety said they would destroy her home, said they would destroy her home. The Secretary of State severely reprimanded Government Ward for his lack of action, which was causing tremendous attention and embarrassment, forcing Ward to de deploy soldiers to protect Sarah Ann and her property. Reverend Moses Rayner, who was re reappointed to Barbados in 1825, he was reluctant to return to Barbados, but Sarah Ann encouraged him, and on land bought from Sarah, for Sarah Ann at minimum cost, with payments of over eight years, he constructed a Methodist church on the site of the present James Street Methodist Church. Sarah Ann was laid to rest on February 25, 1866, in a small cemetery at the back of James Street Chapel. The Gill Memorial Chapel Church at Eagle Hall was named after her. In the 1980s, it was replaced by a new, a new Anne Gill Memorial Church at Fairfield Black Rock St. Michael. She was the only female among the original 10 national heroes named. She died at age 71. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting on the right excellent Samuel Jackman Prescott, the man who broke the mold. Samuel Jackman Prescott was born out of wedlock in 1806 to a Lydia Smith, a free colored woman, and William Prescott, a white wealthy landowner. As a mulatto, at the bottom of the social scale, beneath slaves, he was humiliated because of his appearance, considered insignificant, and belittled at every opportunity. This likely fueled his de determination not to be a second-class citizen. He apprenticed as a joiner after leaving St. Mary's School in Bridgetown, but it was his writing skills and newspaper ownership that made him a leader for change. He was editor of the New Times but flourished at the liberal newspaper, which supported the masses. Founded by poor whites, Prescott and Thomas Harris bought the liberal after it fell into financial difficulty. Ever growing in popularity in 1831, he won the right for free colored people to vote. However, while defending the rights of blacks, he was charged with criminal libel and placed in jail for eight days in 1840. Three years later, on June 6, 1843, Prescott carved a new path in Barbados history when he was elected as one of two members for the city of Bridgetown, the newest constituency. He was the first non-white person to sit in the House of Assembly. Prescott formed the Liberal Party with a small group of white members from the House of Assembly and continued to fight for social justice for 25 years. The party became known as the Opposition. He retired from Parliament in 1860 and accepted the office of Judge of the Assistant Court of Appeal. Samuel Jackman Prescott died at 65 and was buried in St. Mary's Churchyard. The Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology bears his name and his image is also on the Barbados $20 bill. This evening's first scripture reading is taken from Joshua 1, verses 6 to 9. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. 
as I was with Moses. So I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here ends this evening's reading. Good evening, church. The psalm this evening comes from Psalm 18, verse 1 to 3, and thereafter, verses 30 to 33. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. 30 to 33. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on high places. Here ends the reading. Good evening, church. The second scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Here is that reading. We stand to sing together the hymn on Christ the Solid Rock.
second presentation of National Heroes begins with Charles Duncan O'Neill, the social transformer. When Charles Duncan O'Neill joined forces with the oppressed, it was the first time an educated and professional man, a doctor to boot, from the high class, turned his back on his group and dedicated himself to improving the lives of the poor. Born in 1879, he won a Barbados scholarship in 1899 and studied medicine at Edinburgh University. He gained distinctions including the honourable blue ribbon in surgery. At university, O'Neill developed an interest in politics and won a seat in local government on Sutherland County Council while practising in Newcastle, England. He was driven to return to Barbados in 1910, but conditions were so terrible that he left to work and live in Trinidad and Dominica. After 14 years away, he returned to start what all agree amounted to laying the foundation that would lead to social revolution. He launched the Democratic League in October 1924, the first steps taken in Barbados towards a political organization outside the elites. Two months later, it achieved its first success when Chrissy Brathwaite was elected to the House of Assembly. O'Neill also took the first steps towards forming a union when he set up the Working Men's Association in 1926. He also launched a cooperative, an important financial mechanism for others outside the elites. He invested in the Herald newspaper, which agitated for enfranchisement and social reform. O'Neill himself was elected to the House of Assembly in 1932. History notes his visionary thinking and activism. He was the first politician in Barbados to rally for improved working conditions for women, for free education and dental care, improved housing and the abolition of the located labourers system and the Master and Servants Act, which enslaved the poor despite the abolition of slavery. He also campaigned for universal adult suffrage, the right to vote for all. O'Neill died in November 1936. He was that rare individual who rejected all his class stood for and fought for and with the poor. Apart from being a national hero, the $10 note features his image and the Charles Duncan O'Neill Bridge, now the only one of two bearing vehicular traffic in the middle of Bridgetown, is named in his honour. Charles Duncan O'Neill, the social transformer. Good afternoon, all. Clement Osborne Payne, 1904 to 1941, the catalyst of change. The life of Clement Payne was short, but his impact was immeasurable. Trinidad by birth to Barbadian parents. His impact centered on the most momentous four months in the history of Barbados. Payne was the Winston Churchill, the Martin Luther King of his day a stirring orator who motivated the masses to educate and organize themselves against oppression. Because of his fairy speeches, he was watched continually by the police in the capital Bridgetown. He sensed an opportunity when the labor disturbances started in Trinidad in June 1937 and held a meeting in Golden Square Bridgetown to inform of the developments in Trinidad. On July 22nd, Payne was summoned and charged for making a false statement on arrival in Barbados that he was born in Barbados instead of Trinidad. He, he was found guilty and fined and ordered deported. However, he appealed and received massive support. He held a meeting on the night of the same July 22nd 
explaining that the charge was a ploy to remove him from educating and agitating. He started his, his intention to go to the governor to plead his case. Joined by, by some 300 people the next day, he and 13 of them were arrested outside the governor's residence. All pleaded not guilty and got bail, except Payne, who was remanded. On July 26, he won the appeal against make, making a false statement, but the expulsion order remained. He was deported at night. Payne's mantra was, educate, agitate, but do not violate. Hearing of his deportation, the masses got the do not violate part of the creed and took to the streets. At the end of the riots, 14 people were dead, 47 wounded, 500 arrested, and millions of damage to property recorded. Payne got the last laugh and his great wish for change. The riots forced the authorities to admit that there was need for social change and as a result, the Moyen Commission was established. This was the start of the departure of Barbados from a selfdom to a democratic, progressive society with wide social programs. Clement Payne collapsed while speaking at a political meeting in Trinidad on April 7, 1941, and died shortly after. He was 37. The Clement Payne Culture Center was established in his honor in 1989, and there is a bust of him in Golden Square, Bridgetown, the site of, of most of his speeches. Thank you. Good afternoon. Sir Grantley Herbert Adams, a man whose life and career encapsulated the struggle and triumph of a nation on the brink of transformation. Grantley Adams, a visionary leader and the first premier of Barbados, is revered for his pivotal role in steering his homeland towards self-governance and social economic progress. Grantley Adams grew up in a time of colonial rule, where opportunities for people of African descent were limited. Despite these constraints, Adam's early life was marked by academic excellence. He attended Harson College in Barbados and later won a scholarship to study at Oxford University. His time at Oxford was not just an academic journey, but a period of political and social awakening as he witnessed the struggles for rights and representation in the heart of the British Empire. Upon returning to Barbados, Adams embarked on a legal career. However, his destiny was intertwined with the political ties of change sweeping across Barbados and the wider Caribbean. Adams' political journey was characterized by his unwavering commitment to social justice and equality. He became a leading figure in the Barbados Labour Party advocating for workers' rights universal adult suffrage and education reform. His eloquence, legal acumen, and deep understanding of the colonial system made him a formidable advocate for the disenfranchised. As the leader of the Barbados Labour Party and later as Premier of Barbados, Adams' contributions were manifold. He was instrumental in establishing the University of the West Indies, recognizing the power of education in breaking the chains of colonialism and igniting the potential of Caribbean people. Under his leadership, Barbados made significant strides towards self-governance, laying the groundwork for the island's eventual independence. Adam's vision extended beyond the shores of Barbados. He was a key figure in the West Indies Federation, a political union of several Caribbean islands. He served as, as its first and only Prime Minister from 1958 to 1962. Although the Federation was short-lived, Adams' belief in regional unity and cooperation left an indelible mark on Caribbean political thoughts. Sir Grantley Adams' legacy 
is a tapestry of political foresight, social advocacy, and unwavering dedication to the cause of Barbadian and Caribbean development. His work in championing the rights of workers, pushing for education reforms, and leading Barbados onto the path of self-rule earned him the title Father of Democracy in Barbados. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be reading on Sir Hugh Warrow Springer, 1913 to 1994. In many respects, Hugh Springer was the embodiment of what the Barbadian and Barbados have come to be known for throughout the world. He was talented. He was an extremely hard worker. He was as committed in supporting as he was in leading. He was humble, kind and generous, a gem of a man. It is doubtful to this day that there has ever been as great an administrator and organizer in the history of Barbados as Sir Hugh Springer. His work is embedded in the best institutions in Barbados and elsewhere. A 1931 Barbados scholar in classics, he was an educator, a politician, and a leader of organized labor and he rose to the pinnacle of leadership in Barbados, becoming Barbados' third native governor general. Among others, Sir Hugh was the organizer and first general secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union from 1940 to 1947. He was registrar of the then newly established University College of the West Indies, Jamaica, in other words, he established what is now the University of the West Indies, the first General Secretary of Barbados's first political party, the Barbados Labour Party. He was a member of the House of Assembly. He was a minister responsible for education, legal departments, agriculture and fisheries. He was director of the Commonwealth Education Liaison Unit. He was Commonwealth Assistant Secretary General and, General and Secretary General of the Association of Commonwealth Universities. For those who may be thinking that all you are doing is supporting or you are just being bogged down in administrative stuff, be inspired by the life of Hugh Springer who made organizing and administration respected and is a hero for it. The right, excellent Hugh Springer. Thank you. Good afternoon, Church. It is my honor to give the presentation on Sir Frank Leslie Walcott, 1916 to 1999. The Barbadian most associated with trade unionism and advancement of ordinary people is the legendary Sir Frank Walcott. As famous as his work on union affairs in Barbados, the Caribbean, and the world, is his statement, Frank by name, Frank by nature. He was fearless, an incredible speaker, unbelievable at the bargaining table, and beloved by his workers. Without a secondary education and working as a craftsman, Sir Frank was invited by Hugh Springer to join the Barbados Workers' Union in 1946, becoming its first paid employee at $16 a month as Assistant General Secretary. In a twist of fate, then Sir Hugh as Governor General would knight Frank Whirl, Walcott sorry, years later in 1988. Walcott spent 45 years as an employee of the BWU. Initially responsible for grievance handling, he later became deeply involved in negotiations and any administrative duties which fell under Sir Hugh Springer's portfolio. Then Hugh Springer left for Jamaica in 1947 to accept the position of Registrar 
of the University College of the University of the West Indies. Frank was elected General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union in 1948. He retained the position as General Secretary until his retirement four decades later in 1991. He remains by far the longest serving leader of any union in Barbados and it is doubtful anyone will match his record. But it is his work on behalf of particularly the sugar, tourism, and port workers that Frank Walcott is known. He stood firm whenever it was felt workers or a worker was being exploited. Many strikes against all governments, institutions, and businesses will attest to that. Under him, the Labour College at Mangrove, St. Philip, was established and the BWU ventured into housing for its members and women, and women were advanced. Sir so Frank Walcott was also dominant in unionism regionally and internationally. In 1953, he was a delegate to the International Labour Organization Plantation Conference held in Havana. He was elected to the executive board of the International Confederation of the Free Trade Unions, and in 1996, 1969, I do apologize, 1969, became its president. He served three terms as the president of the Caribbean Congress of Labor and served on the governing body of the International Labor Organization. He was also a politician of note, becoming a member of parliament cabinet member and later president of Senate. Frank Walscott was also Barbados' first ambassador to the United Nations. He was one of the two living people to be honored as a national hero in 1989, the other being Sir Garfield Sobers. He died in 1999. A statue to the right excellence of Frank Walcott stands outside the National Insurance Scheme building on Culloden Road, St. Michael. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Very happy National Heroes Day to you all. I'm honored to present in this third set of presentations the right excellent Errol Walton Borough, PC, QC, 1920 to 1987, the father of independence. A colossal in Barbadian politics, described as the chief architect of nationhood, Errol Walton Borough will always be linked with three things that shaped Barbados. First, he is the father of independence. Secondly, while free secondary education was initiated by Sir Granley Adams, Mr. Barrow remains known for the expansion of free secondary education. Thirdly, no one so clearly defined the Barbadian personality and outlook on life. He did his first, he did this first with the famous phrase that to this day guides our national international engagement friends of all and satellites of none. And his famous speech, now known as the mirror image speech. I say three things, but there is a fourth. History will also record him as the leader of the Democratic Labour Party, which incidentally, his birthday was yesterday, which he formed in 1955. After leaving Barbados, Labour Party. Barra, who became from the family of the Charles Duncan O'Neill, was a scholar, but chose to join the British Royal Air Force in World War II. He later graduated from the University of London with a bachelor's degree in economics and industrial law. Returning to Barbados in 1950, he joined the BLP 
and in 1951, when his seat as a senator, as a senior member representing the parish of St. George. In 1955, he left the BLP and formed the Democratic Labour Party, known as the DLP, and lost his seat in the 1956 elections. Mr. Barrow re-entered Parliament after winning a by-election in St. John in 1958, representing that constituency until his death in 1987. He became Premier on winning the 1961 elections and built on the legacy of Granley Adams to advance social and education programs, industrial development and tourism. The Barbados Community College and the Cave Hill Uni Campus University of the West Indies were set up on the borough and he established the National Insurance Scheme. He was a co-founder of CARIFTA, which is known as the Caribbean Free Trade Association, as well as CARICOM. Of course, Mr. Barra has the distinction of being the island's first Prime Minister and, only one to, and the only one to serve as Prime Minister in two separate periods. Returning to the position in 1986, after losing government in 1976, he died in office in 1987. Barra's birthday, January 21st, is celebrated as a national holiday. His likeness is on the $50, is the $50 Barbadian currency bill, and he is the B in the ABC highway. His statue overlooks Independence Bridge Town. And that ends the third session of presentations. Thank you.
Mr. Garfield, St. Auburn's Sobers, the greatest. Even before he was knighted, he was known as a Garf. Actually, the great cigar. Dubbed the greatest cricketer on earth or Mars, the right excellent cigar for sobers occupies the rears of verified ear. He's the greatest cricketer the world has ever seen. The master batsman, a superb bold and fielder, he reset the record books with new statistics that will last decades and some are still standing. No other Barbadian so generated pride among his fellow men and face to the people at home in the region and the world like he did. Everyone wanted to be like Gary Sobers. He was the Caribbean's first folk hero. It was there in the turn-up shirt collar, that stride, call it swagger, and in the sheer dominance on the cricket field. Born in humble circumstances by the age of 12 or 13, Sobers was good enough to play in the Barbados Cricket League as a dangerous left arm spinner and a graceful left-handed batsman. At 17, he was in the West Indies side. At 25, in 1958, he made an incredible 375 not out. Thus, a legend was born. The record stood for 36 years. In 1972, Sobers made 274 in Australia in what stands as the greatest exhibition of batting ever played, and his records include the first to score six sixes in an over. He captained the West Indies team for 39 matches between 1965 and 1972. He also captained the Barbados team from 1966 to 1967. Nottingham Shire from 1968 until 1971 and the rest of the world for two tours to England and Australia. Sobers retired from cricket in 1974. He took to the golf links and is believed that he could have been as outstanding at golf as, as, as he was at cricket. In 1975, he achieved another unique accolade when Queen Elizabeth II changed tradition for the first and only time by knighting Sobers at the Garrison Savannah in Boris instead of Buckingham Palace. In, 1970, in 1986, the Barbados Cricket Association erected the Cigarfield Sobers Pavilion at Kensington Oval in Bridgetown. The University of the West Indies conferred on him an honorary Doctor of Laws. His statue was first placed at the Gary Soda's runabout on the ABC Highway before it was moved to Kensington Oval. So even his statue has a record, the only statue of a hero to be erected twice. Today, the right excellent Garfield Sobers remains an inspiring figure. His name will always be mentioned at the same time as greatness, genius, legendary, and excellence. Good evening, everyone. The honor is mine to present on the right, excellent Robin Rihanna Fenty. Rihanna, as she is universally known, was 10 years old when national heroes were first designated. She's not only an international superstar in the realms of music, fashion, and beauty, but also a proud ambassador for her home country, Barbados. Named a national hero in 2021, the youngest person to be honored, to be so honored, Rihanna's pride in her Barbadian heritage is evident in her role as an ambassador for the nation. With a specific focus on promoting education, tourism, and investment, she has worked tirelessly to raise awareness about Barbados on a global stage. Her most transformative ventures have been the launch of her Savage by Fenty and Fenty Beauty line, which just launched to the accustomed massive success in China, the last of the major markets to conquer. With Savage, Riri, as she is affectionately called, set a new approach by featuring all kinds of models. Rihanna's influence extends beyond her professional achievements. She has become a symbol of empowerment for women and people of color worldwide, breaking barriers and challenging conventions throughout the industry. She's inspired millions to embrace their individuality and pursue their dreams. Rihanna has consistently used her platform to advocate for various social causes. Her philanthropy is quite remarkable as her Clara Lionel Foundation has donated significantly to causes worldwide and, of course, Barbados. Notably, 
She was the first to assist Barbados during COVID-19. As the most recent addition to the Fraternity of National Heroes, she continues to uplift her homeland while inspiring countless individuals to strive for excellence and to make a positive impact in their communities. Thank you. I'm sure that him said the offering him, but I didn't see the offering being taken. But I would suggest then when you're leaving, can you leave the offering? Don't take it back with you. Can you leave it as you go through the, through the door? And I'm sure the organizer will be most grateful, and of course, the church here as well. As a priest, and you're asked to speak of the service, your mind starts to wonder what will the topic be? And where will the lessons be taken from? And then you try to decide how I'm going to set this lesson out. I suppose some ministers will probably do a three-point sermon. Others will find other methods of presenting this, this, this sermon. But as I thought about this, as I thought about today, As I thought about today, and I prayed about it, two verses of scripture came to me. Because if we are celebrating our heroes, we are acknowledging 11 people who have been elevated to hero ships. And the lessons that came to me, the verse that came to me were these two. From the book of Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 13. It says, hold them in high esteem, regard them in love for their work's sake. And the other, less, the other verse that came to mind was a, bur a, a verse from Second Colossians, sorry, Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 7. It says, but you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak. 
for your work shall be rewarded. And this afternoon we sat and we listened and we absorbed all that was being said about our, our heroes. And I'm sure the organizers of the service thought long and hard to before they came up with the theme. Stand with courage. And all the lessons this evening seem to home in on being with courage and being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. To put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and all the other destructive things that are in the world. So this afternoon, my friends, we have come together in this church, a church that is named, or a piece of titles is All Saints, erected to remember those who were called saints. But we are gathered to celebrate in this building those of our nation who were given the right to be called a national hero. Those who showed great courage by their deeds and actions for the advancement of our country, Barbados. Today is the 28th day of April. And 26 years ago, the then government, through an act of parliament, sort of mandated that this date should be a day that we acknowledge, a day we acknowledge we remember a day we esteem, a day we uplift all our national, our national heroes. Tomorrow in Barbados, they are fortunate. They are fortunate because the government in Barbados can give them a holiday off for celebration, all the activities and what have you. Unfortunately, we are not so fortunate. We can't go to our bosses tomorrow and say, or, or, or Friday and say, I would love to have Monday off because it is to celebrate our heroes. It ain't gonna happen. But nevertheless, we have come together this afternoon, in spite of all of that, whereby we can still celebrate, we can still acknowledge those who are our national heroes. But the question may be asked, what is a hero? What is a hero? And more often than not, when that question is asked, people tend to focus on the, the courageous element, which some reflect on like, 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 like bravery, taking risks, like to try to save someone's life, or guiding someone from danger to safety. And most people think that that is what a hero is. The yes to that, but it is wider than just being heroic. It is more than that. If you were to take the Oxford Dictionary and to look up the word hero, it tells us that a hero is described as a person who is admired for their courage and it goes on or their outstanding 
achievements. So it's not all those acts that you do. Like you watch those action pictures, you know, and you say, oh, that's a hero. Because he's flying across the sky, he's saving people, he's doing all these gymnastics, he's doing all these great things. And you say, that is a hero. You never think of the people who are using their minds, using their thoughts. We tend not to, to, to consider them as, 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 as heroes. But we recognize that our heroes are people of quality, people who had dreams, people who had aspirations, but they did not stand as dreams and as aspirations. They brought them to fruition. They had the courage to bring them to fruition. So today, we are saluting our 11 heroes. And we are saluting them in the broader sense of the, that word, hero. Our national heroes did not set about to be a hero. They were men and women who exercised great courage in different pursuits. Their actions were not self-gratification or pompous. Their deeds were not to receive praise and honor. Rather, they were men and women who had a vision, who had a goal for our country, our beloved country, Barbados. And our government acknowledged them by recognizing their achievements, recognizing that they had a vision, recognizing the dream that they had, and the dream that they were able to bring to fruition. And these dreams and aspirations were worthy of praise and honor, and thus bestowed on them the title of national hero. Our heroes were fearless and courageous. As you listened, you would have heard from the various speakers about but a summary of, of their lives and the risks that they took, the adventures that they went on. Our heroes were people of courage. To have courage is to be bold. They were bold. They were fearless. Courage is what gives us motivation and drive us to take the first step, even though it might be scary or uncertain. And our heroes had that almost in their veins. They had that courage and they were not prepared to allow anyone to turn them back from that goal. They had a goal and they visualize it and they kept their focus on, till, on that goal until it became a reality for the people of Barbados. I have a part here in my sermon where I said I would invite you to go on the internet, look at their biographies, read it, and you will see, I mean you heard something, heard something here in the church, but by extension now you can go on the net and read even further about their lives and their work. You see, if you set about to be a hero, there's a possibility that you will fail. Our heroes 
didn't sit down one day and say, I am going to become a hero. No. That bit was far from their minds. That was not the goal. The goal was to see the advancement of Barbados. That was the main goal. They had that foresight. They had that vision. So what they did was to the advancement of our nation. And because of that, it brought us to a situation where the government and, and the people of Barbados thought that it was right that these men and women be given that title of national heroes. They merit the honor bestowed on them, the right excellent. They were excellent in their exploits. Their legacy will live on, thereby showing us what is possible if we have a belief and if we stand, if we stand with courage. Our lesson suggests to us today that we as a people ought to continue to put our faith and trust in Jesus. He is the one who is going to see us through all the travails of this world and all the vicissitudes that you might go through. We need the power. We need the Spirit of God to guide us and to continue to guide our nation. The Lord has been the people's guide for past 300 years. With Him, since all the people's side, we have no doubt or fear. Upward and onward, we shall go inspired, exalted, free. And greater will our nation be in strength and unity. So we come together today to honor those among us who give their life work to the advancement of our country. And through them building that foundation, our country has reached where it is today. And it's now left for the youngsters to continue to build on that foundation and to make Barbados the best country on earth. But we got to continue praying, you know, because climate change is a real phenomenon. Climate change is a real phenomenon. And our country is small. We are an island, which means that we are surrounded by water. And we got to pray that God will enable our country to stay together. I remember some years ago, I think there was a section of St. Andrew that was splitting. Because I, th I, I think they were putting in some boulders and some other things to, 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 to strengthen it. And we got to pray. I think St. Joseph also had a problem because I know we lost St. Joseph Parish Church because of the land moving. And St. Saviour's in St. Andrew's as well. So we got to pray that God will hear the prayers that we are asking of him. To hold our country, to knit it together, so that going forward, we will have things that people, other countries, will want to emulate. Other countries will want to copy. Other countries will ask us, how did we achieve it? And then we'll be able to tell them. I almost said that God was a Beijing. 
but that might get me into trouble. But sometimes we want to think that God's a vision and, and he's, he's with us, you know, and he's, he's hearing the prayers that we are, we are offering. But it says, if a nation is righteous, if a nation is righteous, God will hear the prayers that they are offering. So what we need is righteous people in our country. And if you have righteous people in our country who put their faith and trust in Jesus, he will hear the prayers that you are offering and he will accede to them. So brothers and sisters, on this hero's day, we thank God for them. We thank God for their lives. We thank God for all their attributes. We thank God for the mindset that they had. We thank God that they were not deterred, that they were not put off from the things that they felt in their own heart was right for the advancement of Barbados. We pray that God will rise up, raise up more people in that spirit, in that vein, who will do great things for our nation and who will continue to help our small country to push way above its weight. Brothers and sisters, blessing on you on this Heroes Day. You too could be a hero, but don't plan to be one. Heroes have to be recognized by other people for what you do. So don't think you get to mama and say, I'm a hero. Because if you say you are, and no other person is recognize it, recognizing it, then you're not a hero. It depends on other people seeing that quality, seeing those characteristics, seeing your ability. And then other people see that and acknowledge it, and then let them give you the praise. There's a saying, we say in Barbados, don't blow your own trumpet. Let other people blow it. Let them see what you, what, you are, what you are doing, what you are made of, and God will continue to bless you. Blessing on the National Heroes Day. Amen. Amen.
Good evening, everybody. It's an honor to be here and to make the prayer for our heroes of Barbados. Merciful Father, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country whose courage gave us our liberties we now enjoy, established the foundation on which we flourish and who by their individual achievements and excellence have positioned Barbados way above scale for its size. We beseech you, O oh Lord, to remember our heroes who have left and keep them in the eternal peace that surpasses all understanding and continue to grant those alive the blessings of wisdom and humility that inspire our people. You've given us fine examples in all areas of life and we pray, dear Lord, that we learn from our heroes and be inspired to improve our nation and our lives. We also remember the families of our heroes as they share their loved ones with us. Dear Lord, we offer this prayer knowing you fulfill the heart's desire of those who seek you with noble intentions. Amen. Good afternoon to the church. Good afternoon to the church. I hope we are not going to sleep. My praise for the Prime Minister and Government of Barbados. God our Father, we ask that you continue to bestow your love and favor on our leaders of Barbados. Our prayer is that you continue to bless the government of our land, that they lead your people in peace, which can be shared among themselves and the entire nation of Barbados. May our President and Prime Minister seek your guidance in the required wisdom and grace in the exercise of their leadership. Dear God, give the members of the cabinet, the members of both the upper and lower houses, and all of those in leadership positions in our land, the courage and foresight to provide for the needs, sorry, for the needs of our people and fulfill their obligations to their communities. For the judiciary of our island, may the judges and the officers of our courts be blessed with fortitude and integrity that all human rights be safeguarded and justice be served in the interests of all. Father, we pray that you, you be the light of our government, rely on us. May your strength be accepted as they realize their responsibilities to their people. They be trustworthy, diligent, be united and serve with humanity, humbleness, and fairness. May they serve you faithfully in all matters on and honor your holy name. Dear God, we ask you to bless our nation now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Afternoon. Prayer for the people of Barbados. Dear Lord, we thank you for guiding the people of our country, Barbados. We are humbled by how you have been our strength, hope, and inspire us to be courageous with throughout the years. Protect us from any divisions that challenge our ability to live lives pleasing to you and for the good of all. We ask that righteousness reign in our community, exposing and cutting off all evil within our midst. We pray that you continue to help us appreciate our many blessings and each other. Let justice, love, peace, patience bind all Barbadians together that we will be good neighbours, for build communities and show humanity to all. We pray, Father, that you continue to bless us with knowledge, discernment and common sense as we face new challenges to make new decisions benefit you and advance our country. We especially pray for the blessings of our young people, that they will walk in ways pleasing to you, and that you equip them with all the characteristics such as becoming responsible, productive citizens. Bless them with patience, discernment, and lovely love. Install in all of us appreci appreciation of goodness and all that bestow on us. That we guide our heritage, that you strive for fairness and excellence in our endeavors, strength and legacy for our future generations. Father, we ask that this prayer in the name of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. 
we pray for a better world. Dear God, we humble ourselves before you in prayer and supplication as you have counseled to ask for a world in which our country and all nations can enjoy life as you envisioned. We pray for a world of peace and justice filled with joy and ordered by equity. A world in which the concept of family of nations is a real and practical thing, an equitable, an equitable thing, with each lifting up each other. A world in which healthcare is accessible to all and the rich do not keep get, getting richer but show compassion to the poor. God, we thank you for the gifts you have given us, the abundance of your creation. We pray that we will pause and enjoy the wondrous beauty of the world you have given us and be resolved to stop destroying it. There is a great deal of turmoil, conflict, war and political instability in the world. We ask for peace to be restored. Please grant wisdom and integrity to world leaders so that they will work for the good of the people they govern and serve. We pray that all citizens everywhere would have the right, the right preserve. The leaders are not cavalier or arbitrary so they can live peacefully, free from fear. Dear Father, we pray that you will place in our hearts the spirit of courage to do what is right, to move us to reach out to others in need, and lead each of us to play our part so that now and in generations to come, all your children may enjoy a better world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
It's been a great pleasure to have you all here today to celebrate Barbados National Heroes Day and to hear of the lives of those who inspire us today to be heroes. I know that there are refreshments after the service, so do please stay out behind and enjoy those. And now we pray for God's blessing upon us all. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And so now, as the colours are retreated, we sing, Mine eyes have seen the glory. <laughs> 